Listen, I hear y'all, okay? Y'all hitting me in my DMs, giving me the business about this book. Why the hell are you reading us a Wikipedia, Nay? We can go to Wikipedia for this. I got it. I got it. I'm trying my best to make it funny. And I promise you, the next book will be much, much better. We either going to do the Ray Charles book with David Ritz, or we're going to do this tell-all book about Tina Turner. Okay. Let's get to it. Well, hello there, love bugs. Hello there, fellas. If you have not already done so, please remember to like, share to Facebook, subscribe, and visit uptopbeauty.com. Today's looky lookies would be our ultimate animal print turban, our Miss Chi Chi Shades, and our Lupus Wood Bangle Bundle. Now, let's continue talking about Duke for Curves. Uh, I'll be there. My life with the... Y'all, before we begin, Lulu is right here. Uh, so if you hear some snoring, you know, show me mercy. We know them, just not that well. I said Eddie Holland's a great singer. He sounds just like Jackie Wilson. Barry laughed. That's the thing. He think he's a better writer than singer. Go over with Mickey and he'll introduce you. I'll call over there and tell them we need them to write you some hits. That's how it started with HDH. More than a musical collaboration started that day. It was a friendship. The Four Tops' new musical direction couldn't have been in better hands. As the new additions to Motown's family, we started hanging around Hitsville, even when we weren't working. We were having the time of our life because we were making great friends with everybody. The Temptations, the Miracles, the Supremes, little Stevie Wonder, he was this cute young man, like a kid in a toy store. While we were waiting for HDH to write us one of their masterpieces, we landed a gig at the 20 Grand, one of Detroit's most prestigious nightclubs. Very classy place where all the top acts performed. We were good friends with the owner, Bill Cobbas, who learned we were back in town. He told us we could work there whenever we wanted. We had just wrapped a show at his club one night when Brian Holland showed up in our dressing room. Fellas, I got y'all a song, he announced. I got y'all a hit. Yeah. We got all excited. What's the song? I got it on tape, he said, playing it on his cassette. He sang along with just a piano accompanying him. It's called... Baby, I need your loving, got to have all your loving. Well, it sounds okay. What are you going to put with it, I asked. Will you come to the studio and record it, he asked, really stoked about his new song. Baby, I need your loving turned out to be the easiest recording we ever made. Proof to us that our destiny with Motown was signed, sealed, and delivered, as Stevie Wonder put it so well. Girl, that was corny. This book is corny. We were thrilled, thinking our record was about to be released. But it would take months to happen. In the meantime, the Supremes single, Where Did Our Love Go? And baby, baby, where did our love go? They were both number one smash hits, of course, written by HDH, who were unstoppable at this point. The Supremes followed with another HDH hit, Come See About Me, which was climbing the charts fast. It was at that point that Barry released our first Motown recording in 1964 without us even knowing it. Baby, I Need Your Lovin' was climbing the charts. 
I was feeling pretty good about the future when my mother called. So anyway, the first job I ever had was cleaning toilets in an office building. So you better believe there is no job that I think I am too good for. You know what's funny? The only reason why I wouldn't do fast food is because I don't, I, I'm not quick enough to do that the shit. The person at the first window, they got to take the person at the drive throughs order. Then at the same time, accept money from the person before them and make sure that the money right. There's no way I could do that, y'all. I could not fuck the church's money up. So that's the only reason why I wouldn't do uh, fast food because I don't want to mess it up. I can't, I'm just telling you, I just can't. I'm not. I can't do that, y'all. But I will clean that toilet. The people she cleaned for had inquired if she knew a group called the Four Tops. She admitted that her son was in it. They were excited about our song on the radio, and they wanted to see us perform. Proudly, I told her about our gig at the Phelps Lounge, and for a minute, it felt good that I could not only help them get tickets, but that we were the stars of the show. But the more I thought about it, the more it didn't feel right. My mother was a maid, scrubbing white folks' floors, cleaning their toilets, and changing their sheets. They were paying her next to nothing. Now they were asking her to help them get tickets to hear her son sing. I called her back. Let me tell you something, Mama. I said, I don't like the idea of this whole thing, especially you working for these folks. I got to work somewhere, son, she said. No, you don't. I'm going to find a way to retire you. I can dig it. I mean, I'm a small YouTuber, but if my mama was alive, let me tell you something. <laughs> My mother wouldn't have to work no more. Now, she worked for the government. It was a good job. I mean, what is she now? Okay, so I'm 15, not 15. I'm 51. My mother had me at 15. So 66, she would have been retired by now. But, bruh, if my mother didn't die from heart disease, y'all, I promise you, I would have found a way for her to retire because she had the time. She didn't have the age. We're going to have some hit records, I told her. I think I might make some real money, Mama. Well, I sure hope so, she said. Because, believe it or not, me and your sister are just barely making it off of what's left of her child support each month. But we've been looking for a house. One that's not too expensive, but big enough for me, the girls, and all the kids. I think we found one. Dookie got beside himself. He feeling real good. You know, his ego is flashing. He says, Mama, go find that house and get back to me when you find your house. A week before our Phelps Lounge engagement, my mama called to tell me that she'd found the house she wanted. Now I had to deliver. The only thing I could think of was to ask Barry Gordon. What is that the old folks used to say? Your mouth wrote a check? That your ass can't cash? See, he talking big game. He ain't even got the money. So now he got to figure out a way to come up with the down payment for uh, his mama's house. Because he told her go on out there and find a house. Look, knowing that Barry would sometimes take risks and hoping he'd bet on me paying him back. Look, Barry, I said, I got a small problem, but it shouldn't be that big to you. I need you to loan me some money. He cut me off, man. I don't do this, man. Well, just advance me the money, man, I said. He started laughing and said, Duke, let me think about it. Come back tomorrow. Feeling hopeful, I returned the next day, and not one check awaited me but two. One for $10,000 and another for 2500 for the taxes. I almost cried. I told Barry that he had just saved my mama and I was so grateful I would never let him down. I couldn't express it in words. Barry simply said, man, go on and do what you got to do. With the rest of the money, I went downtown and bought four pairs of alligator shoes and I put a down payment on a Cadillac. Then I hung out the whole weekend, crying from one bar to the next, getting high and sobbing. I was so happy. I didn't know I could be that happy. So now we're moving on talking about Motown's artist development. They always talk about that. Talk about the lady. It was her name. Miss Maxine. Charlie Atkins. We listened to Charlie's ideas, but unlike the temps, 
We kept our dancing to a cool minimum. The reaction we were getting from just one hit record was amazing. Soon we discovered that big money didn't automatically come with hit records. It would be two years before we cleared a royalty check. In order to make a living, we started gigging again. When they put on the Motown Review, the money management company would buy each act for 12 days and give us X amount of dollars and take out their percentages for management. Now dig this. Esther Gordy was the money woman. Fakir broke down how much money that they got or that the four tops got, right? Let me say this. I'm sure that all the acts didn't get what Fakir said that the four tops got. And I'm just going to leave it at that. My wife and I had been separated for a while. Before we hit the big time, we weren't making enough to support a family. The other wives kept dancing and helping out. One day, Inez had told me she was going to get a job at the post office. She also said that she wanted a divorce. I didn't know it had gotten that bad. I couldn't believe it. I tried to reason with her, but she held firm. She told me that she had a guy that she wanted to marry. On the Jesus, I know he worked at the post office too. Y'all, I don't know one person that worked at the post office who mate don't work at the post office too. What is that about? Y'all work at the post office and you find love? Is that what happened? I, I don't I don't know. I don't know. Now, they may divorce later, you know, and both of them might be raging alcoholics or, you know, PCP smokers. But, oh, my God, it's something about them people at the post office. They get a job. They fall in love. After that, Murray Wilson and I started growing closer. Ooh. <laughs> already done so please remember to like share the facebook subscribe visit up top beauty check out our ultimate animal print turban our miss chi chi shades and our lupus bundles now remember this the same people that you meet on the way up will always be the same people that you meet on the way down my naysayers my patron loves you babies y'all better have a good one peace